love you. and welcome to episode 59 of the Nicole Stitches podcast. I am a left-handed crocheter, knitter, and general crafter coming to you from Northern Virginia where I work and live with my fiance, <laughs> or Cat Webster, and our kitten, Birdie. You can keep up with me on Instagram at Nicole SP Designs, on Ravelry as she writes things, on Pinterest at NSP Designs, and in my shop, nspdesigns.com, where I make and sell handmade project bags, notions, pouches, and other fiber accessories. <laughs> as well as original crochet patterns. Here's Birdie, come to say hello, and she's over it, okay? <laughs> um, there's a Ravelry group for the podcast, and you can go there to find a Get to Know Us thread where you can introduce yourself, a Q&A thread where you can ask me questions I'll answer in future videos, the monthly pattern giveaway thread where you can enter to win a pattern that was featured on the podcast in the preceding month, and it's also where you'll find the chatter and finished object threads for the NSP Comfy Crochet Cal, which is a casual crochet along I'm running this year. I think that's all the uh, typical stuff out of the way. If you're new, thank you for choosing to give me a shot. I hope you like it here. If you're a return viewer, thanks for coming back. Uh, Birdie is running around here. There she is, as usual, exploring and hanging out. So this week I have a lot of progress on one whip for you, a little bit of progress on the other. Um, I have a new in my queue segment and that's pretty much it. So I'm just gonna get rolling, I think. Hi, baby. Oops. Um, and start with my first whip. So this is the Minaret by Christina Denae. Here's my project bag. Here's my pin from Twee Stitch, my friend Kelsey. And I have some really good progress to show you. Uh, let me finagle my needles here so they're good to go and I will hold it up. So this the donut is where I was last week when I last recorded. And as you can see, here we are now. So I have, Birdie, no. <laughs> I have finished. Ma'am, here's where I was last week when I recorded. And here is where I am now. I have bound off the body and I have put one of the sleeves on the needles and I haven't done any knitting yet on the sleeves. Um, I bound off the sweater during my lunch time today and then I will I put the sleeves on a needle and that's as far as I got. Um, so I'm gonna work through the sleeves. It looks like it's pretty straightforward for both sleeves which is awesome and then I'll be done. So maybe this will be a finished object next week. I feel like quite possibly. Um, I think it's a reasonable estimate but you never know. And next is My Ephemeris by Deborah Gerhard. And I've gotten some good progress on, in, in on this as well. Here you can see where I was last week. This is my little ice cream sandwich from Pitter Patter Polymer. My donut progress keeper on my minaret is from Itty Little Bitty Delights. I am uh, doing a little something with her right now. It's mostly her. Um, she is just featuring a goodie. Uh, from me in a club kit that she has going on. It is the Cozy Sock Monthly Cozy Sock Mystery Yarn Charm Club. <laughs> I had to read it off the screen, but um, you have the option. You get um, a sock pattern, a, a mystery stitch marker, a sock pattern, and you have the choice to add a skein of yarn. And then she also got. Um, we worked together for me to create a goodie that will be included in one of the um, packages as well. So that's live in her shop right now. It looks like there are still some slots left. Um, so I'll try to remember to link that in the in the description below if you're interested. But my donut progress keepers from her, I have quite a few from her. I really love them. They're great. They've held up really nicely. This one is from Pitter Powder Polymer. And same thing, um, held up really well. You know, I really just pull my stuff out of my bag pretty roughly, I shove it back in, I throw my project bags all around, and both of these makers, their markers have held up really well. So um, I'll have them both linked in the description below. But this is my ephemeris shawl. 
and this is where I was last week. Here's where I am now. So a pretty good chunk done. And most of this was done on the same day. Uh, I'm knitting this in Hazel Knits Artisan Sock in the colors Hoppy Blonde and Verdigris is this beautiful blue um, that also has speckles of a color very similar to Hoppy Blonde, which is why I think they just complement each other so nicely. Um, so most of this was done last Friday. We had a friend's um, birthday slash housewarming party to go to, and they live a little bit away from us. It was a little bit of a drive, nothing like huge, but um, we were in the car for well, like an hour to get there. Um, and then during the party, I kind of ended up just chilling. I grabbed a drink and I found a spot and I knit. Um, <laughs> that was kind of the nature of the party. It wasn't a party where like everyone's together region. It was more like people kind of split off into little groups and did did their own things together, played games and stuff. So I kind of just sat in a room with some, some of the people at the party, Adam and some other people, and I just had my drink and I did my knitting and sometimes people would come in and we'd chat with them and then they'd leave and I'd get back to my knitting. So I got a decent amount done <laughs> for someone who was at a party. Uh, yeah, so I'm repeating, um, you can see here, I am repeating this diamond pattern right here. So it's actually maybe going to be a little bit of a challenge when I pick this back up for me to remember where I am <laughs> and what I need to do next. Because super helpfully, the designer in this pattern has listed off what your stitch count should be at the end of every single row. However, for this repeat, all she says is, you know, repeat these rows again. And so you don't have the line by line what the stitch count is so I can't count my stitches and see where I am I have to like kind of read I have to think about it a little bit more but shouldn't be too bad you know I've set this down and picked it back up before so we'll get there um and yeah I say this every week but I was really excited to knit this pattern um since I discovered it it's just been something that was pretty high up on my want to make list on my queue and so I'm happy to get it done. Um, if I have it done by the honeymoon, it will probably come with us as well. Um, you know, a shawl is a nice thing to have. You can wear it different ways. It'll keep you warm, all that good stuff. We'll see. I'm not going to push myself. Um, I'm not going to force it. If it happens, it happens. Uh, but I would like to have it done by then. I got it like six weeks, uh, which is like a wild thing to say. Um, it's getting to, to be like a very real thing now it's like it's coming in on 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 us uh it felt for a long time like very distant i think because we had like over a year of just being engaged and planning and stuff um we found our venue pretty quickly after we got engaged and that determined what our date was so we've known it this whole time but it's just felt very far away and now it's coming <laughs> and a lot of the stuff is done um, I just, I like to get things done. I get very excited about them and I get focused. And if it's something that I can take care of and eliminate the stress of having to do it later or just avoid procrastinating or whatever, if I can get it checked off, I like to get it checked off. So a lot of stuff is done, but also there's a good amount of stuff that's not done. <laughs> so, you know, it's happening. But uh, yeah, so that considered, I'm not gonna push myself to, you know, finish this project by then. Just not a smart idea. Uh, and that's everything I have for you this week for works in progress. That's what I've been working on. I spent more time knitting this past week than I have for the last couple weeks. Um, the last couple weeks I mentioned I've had some hand and wrist pain so I've been trying to take it easy and I've been distracting myself with video games. Uh, but this week I got back on it. I had some fun stuff that I really wanted to watch so that helps me. Um, and uh, if you're curious, I've been watching, what have I been watching? I've been watching Harlots, which is a series on Hulu. It is not for tender eyes and ears. <laughs> um, I will say that. Um, doesn't bother me, but if it's, if that's stuff that you want to, um, you know, keep away from young eyes, um, it can be graphic at times. The language can be lewd. It's called Harlots. So 
you know, you can guess what it's about. Uh, but it's a really great show. Um, this third season is a little bit wild. They've had some like major plot twists that I was not expecting. And I'm a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, I'm having some feelings about them. I'm not sure if I love what happened, but it's happened and I can't change it. But I've been watching Harlots and I've also been watching um, this docu-series came out on Netflix called The Last Czars. Um, and it was about the uh, Tsar Nicholas II and Alexandra of Russia and their children, um, Tatiana, Olga, Maria, Anastasia, and Alexei, and how they were um, murdered during the Russian Revolution. And it's a multi-part um, docudrama, I guess. They, they, it's a documentary, so you have like talking heads of experts speaking about what happened, and you have photos and stuff and footage of the actual family, but then they also hired actors and have them in costumes with a script acting out um, decent portions of each episode, which I think is a really interesting approach. It was um, very well done, I thought, very compelling. Um, if you've been with me for a little bit, you know I recently read a book about the same family. I read it, it was from the point of view of the mother of Nicholas II, um, and this was, uh, I think it kind of got me excited about the topic, and so I, this happened to be on Netflix um, recently. It just happened to come out at the same time, so I was like immediately put into my queue and started watching. Um, and yeah, that just just a really tragic thing that happened. Um, you know, they did some things wrong. Um, they were very sheltered people, I think, growing up being the children of royalty and these generations long dynasties. They were obviously kind of naive about their position and their responsibilities and their privileges and all that and you know they made their mistakes but also they didn't all have to be uh killed in the way that they were <laughs> so um it goes into a lot of aspects of all that um it's a very dramatic and sad story but yeah that was a really well done series um and i really liked it and i think i was so excited to watch it that it made me you know want to sit down and watch that every night and do my knitting instead of um playing a game and also my hands my joints feel better so there's that too uh, I also, this past weekend, watched the third, the second season, not the third season, the second season of Mindhunter, which, again, not for tender eyes or ears, <laughs> but I am a, um, I have an interest in true crime. You use the phrase, I'm a true crime fan, and it can give a weird impression. <laughs> so let me clarify, I'm interested in true crime. Um, I find it fascinating to think about the psychology of, of why these crimes happen and how they happen. And I also find the ways that they're solved really interesting and the stories of the people affected by them are also, you know, very compelling and emotionally impactful. Um, and Mindhunter uh, is a Netflix series, if you don't know, it's inspired by the real life uh, guys who came up with criminal profiling, like understanding who a offender is likely to be and why they're doing what they're doing. Um, they went around the country and interviewed um, actual offenders like Ed Kemper and Charles Manson and uh, David Berkowitz, the son of Sam. Um, and so Mindhunter is a fictional TV series based on that. So the second season became available on Friday and I got through it by Saturday evening. <laughs> um, it was great entertainment for me while I was doing a lot of prep work for the shop. I am working to get my Halloween stuff uh, available, my Halloween and fall stuff available for y'all. And while I was just powering through that, I was watching Mindhunter. Um, so that's my, that's a personal update in the middle of the episode. I will do a new in my queue segment for you really quick. This week I have five things for you. I have three garments and two shawls. And uh, two of these are from the upcoming issue of Pom Pom Quarterly. So you cannot buy them on Ravelry just yet. I know that's a bit of an obstacle to accessibility and I'm sorry about that. Um, but it's what I'm excited about right now. Um, I try to make sure that the things that I share with you are pretty easily accessible. Um, unfortunately, to get any of these patterns, these two patterns now, you would have to buy the episode, uh, the episode, the issue of Pom Pom. But after a certain period of time, the patterns do get released individually. So keep an eye on them. If you're interested, you know, add them to your queue and just check in every once in a while. I'm not positive what the period is between like before they can get released on their own, but it does happen. Um, I've bought individual patterns that were previously featured in Pom Pom before, so keep that in mind. Um, if, if buying the full issue is outside of your budget right now, that's 
fair. Um, it's not a cheap magazine, but um, it will eventually be available. So the first one I have for you is the Astragal Pullover by Anur Burkambayeva. This is a textured pullover. It looks like it's done in reverse stockinette and it's got some light texturing, kind of similar vibe to the minaret with the reverse stockinette and the light cabling going on. It's really, really pretty. Um, it comes in nine sizes. The bust range is a finished circumference of uh, 37 and a half inches on the low end to 69 inches at the high end and it's intended to be worn with six to eight inches of positive ease so that's a pretty great um, inclusive bust range I think when you think that you know your smallest size is 37 and a half inches that's pretty inclusive um, and you could always you know if you wanted to wear it with less ease that opens it up even more next um, this is the other one that that's the first one that's from pom-pom this is the other one that's from pom-pom so these are the only two that are like that the rest of them are already individual available on Ravelry but um, the second one is the Fata Morgana by Sylvia Watts Cherry and this is a DK weight sweater it's just a textured pullover um, very cute I love the the texture this comes in again nine sizes with the bust uh, finished bust being 33 inches on the low end to 65 inches on the high end to be worn with one to five inches of positive ease next is the final sweater pattern that I have for you this week this has been out for a little while and I'll be honest I was not a fan of this when it first came out I did not like it I thought it was weird and I didn't see what everyone was losing their minds about but the, it's been one of those things that it has kept showing up in my Instagram feed and in some knitting groups that I'm in. I keep seeing pictures of it and the more I see it, the more it grows on me. And I finally have been like, yeah, okay, actually, I really like that. <laughs> and I would like to have it. Um, this is the Once in Floral sweater by Maxim Sear. I hope that's how you say that last name. Um, I featured a sweater by him in a previous new MyQ segment um, that I want to make for Adam. This one is a unisex sweater pattern. Um, the finished bust circumference is 34 and 3 quarter inches on the low end to 54 and a half inches on the high end. Um, I'm not sure about what the ease recommendation is. I don't see one here on the page. But the story of this sweater is that it's, and I like, I'm sure I've shown the picture by now. It's probably not for everyone. <laughs> um, it wasn't for me when it first came out, but it has grown on me to a point where I really want it. Um, but the designer has said that he was inspired by the wardrobe of a character on the televi on a television show. I'm about to say the name of it. It's going to sound like a no-no word, which is the point of the title, but it's not a no-no word. So the show is Schitt's Creek. It is a Canadian sitcom, and most of it's available on Netflix, except for the most recent season. Um, which if you have on demand, you might be able to watch it. I was able to watch the last, the most recent season that way. Um, but at least the first like four or five seasons are on Netflix. Um, and it's really, really funny. Um, it's a very particular sense of humor. So not everyone would get it and that's fine. For example, I love it. Uh, Adam, who has been around me when I've watched a few episodes does not see what's funny about it. That's fine. We're all wrong about something, <laughs> but, uh, there's the character uh, David on the show has a very unique <laughs> style and this sweater was inspired by that style. It's totally something that I could see him like likely wearing on the show. Uh, and I just, you know, I, again, I didn't, I didn't love this at first. I was like, that looks like wallpaper in <laughs> like that we would have had in our house in the 90s. but. Every time I look at it more and more, I think that's a little bit of the appeal, honestly, is like that level of big floral, big floral energy and kitsch. And you know what? Now I love it. I just, I just do. I just love it now. I don't know what happened. It's like a light, somebody flicked a switch or hit a button and now I love it and I'm obsessed with it. And I am 100% buying in to that kitschy, giant floral. Yeah, I really like it. Um, so again, it's a unisex sweater. Maxim is a man. He models a sweater. There's actually also a lot of um, project pages from ladies on Ravelry as well. So you can see it modeled on both body types and decide if it's something that, you know, you think would look good on you, something that you're interested in. Um, I think it helped me actually to see it on but like female body types that are similar to mine that kind of helped it grow on me a bit because I could kind of envision myself more in it and see, see how it would work for me. 
I just, I can't explain what happened, but now I'm obsessed with it. So, you know, if you ever had that happen, give things a second chance, you know? Life is short. Knit yourself a sweater with giant flowers on it and don't regret it. And the last two patterns that I have for you are from the same designer. I featured her before. She's got a lot of great stuff, mostly shawls. Um, and this is Tammy Gore. The first shawl I have for you. I have liked this shawl for a long time. I don't think that I've shown it in a new in my queue, but I don't remember for sure. And I'm not going to check. So if I have, sorry. But if I haven't, then here it is. This is the Chatham shawl by Tammy Gore. There is a worsted weight pattern and I, I probably, when I get to this, will not knit it worsted. Um, I will probably do it in like a DK. That's just my taste. I don't know. I have a couple worsted shawls in my queue that I kind of waffle about. Do I like the idea of a worsted shawl or would I rather convert it to a different yarn? Today I'm feeling like I would probably do this in a lighter weight, but when I get to, I might find the perfect worsted weight yarn and I and think that, you know, it's the perfect combination for it. Who's to say? But I do love the textured look of this, this uh, shawl, the two colors, how they work together. It's really pretty. And I'm a fan. The other one is the Sweet Soul by Tammy Gore. I also don't remember if I showed you. Now that I'm saying it, I was pretty confident that I had not shown this before. But now that I'm saying it, I think I might have. So, I don't know. Again, if I have, sorry. But it's another shawl. Um, it's got a really fun combination of some color play. Hey, birdie. A little bit of lace, some texture, some fringe, some bobbles. It's got all the things, all the fun things. So what would you like? How can I help you? This is another one that's on my queue and I'll get to it someday soon, hopefully. It's another worsted weight shawl. Don't know if it'll stay worsted if I do it. Who's to say? And that's what I have for you this week. Shop news, I am still working away on the fall update. I will give you a preview with this fabric. This is my bag. That is going to be my personal um, Halloween bag because it is an oopsie bag. I um, had some wine when I was cutting <laughs> this fabric and I made an oopsie in measuring. So this one's mine. Uh, but this is one of my Halloween fabrics. I am really excited about it. We know that donuts are very on brand for NSP designs. Here's the inside fabric. So this is what this, uh, this fabric is going to be having this lining uh, all across the board. And there will be large and medium bags. There will be a small bag in this print, again, because I had wine. Um, and there will also be project pouches and DPN cozies. There are also, as I said, a handful of other fabrics that are coming. I'm not going to show them to you yet because they're going to be a surprise. I'm going to take a lot of fun photos and roll them out slowly. So if you want to see what they are, follow me on Instagram. And that's my shop update. Uh, that's the episode this week. Hope you enjoyed it. If you were new, if you were a return viewer, thank you for coming back. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Give this video a like, comment if you have something to, to say. It really helps me out when people comment. Um, it's a big help when people like. I believe the way that YouTube algorithms work, it's an even bigger help when people comment. So let me know what you think of anything that I talked about in this video. I mean, are you watching Mindhunter? Do you watch Harlots? What do you think, what do you think of what happened to the Romanov dynasty? Let me know in the comments. Um, then that's pretty much it. I'm going to go now. Have a great week, get lots of crafting done, and I'll see you next time. Bye!